What's up guys, it's 13 with Superior Mobile by 13 and today I'm not working on a car, I am building a concrete block wall. In fact, all 11 courses of this monstrosity are captured in beautiful, elegant time lapse for your viewing enjoyment and about 50 hours worth of labor is being shortened down to a 10 minute video. So I hope you'll stick with me and enjoy my ridiculous commentary as I showcase this entire process. The primary takeaway that I hope you take away from this video is that literally anybody can build a block wall. And I also want your other takeaway to be that just because you can doesn't mean you should because this is an extremely labor intensive time consuming process. And if you've ever seen a professional bricklayer or mason do their job, it looks so stinking easy and they are wicked fast at it. And although they charge a premium, they are skilled labor and they deserve that premium because they will get the job done far more quickly and way more efficiently than you and I could ever dream of. Now, I personally have a lot more time and motivation than I do money and common sense. So for me, the decision was very simple that I was gonna build this block wall. And I'm really glad that I did. It was a really fun project. And uh, although I screwed up a lot of things, the final result was exactly what I needed. It was structurally sound and it looked beautiful. So it was a total win. And if you can believe it or not, the worst, hardest part of this entire job is actually the part that you're watching right now, which is basically all the backfill that I had to do. So I wheelbarrowed in a lot of dirt. Basically this wall was engineered to require 18 inches of embedment, which is basically about those first two courses. And that's a lot of dirt to have to bring over that three courses of wall. It looks like it was really quick via the wheelbarrow, but that's because all of the off-camera footage was me loading the wheelbarrow and pushing dirt from various parts of the yard to the wall. Now, as far as mistakes go, the very first course, I don't know if you noticed earlier on in the video, I actually butt up right against the pre-existing concrete block wall over there, who is aptly named Lewis Greenwall. After I had laid that first course of blocks, I realized that Lewis actually leans over a whopping two inches. So the second course that I did is actually all a two inch offset. None of that's gonna matter. It's just basically gonna get buried. And I ended up putting a bunch of concrete in there to fill in that little gap at the bottom. What that means is I can build up this new wall with straight edges and it will butt up right against Lewis Greenwall at the top of the wall where it matters, where it'll be visible. And it'll just have a little bit of a gap along the side. And that part I'm gonna later on fill with mortar and concrete. Now you're witnessing me do my favorite course, which is called the bond beam course, where there is horizontal rebar. You may have noticed that the concrete blocks are slightly different and they have that notch along the top and that is for the rebar to lay across. Super important note about this course is that I'm putting down a product called mortar mesh and that is in between each course that doesn't get a full vertical fill. I spray painted on the wall anywhere that there's a vert which is the vertical rebar. So when I start pouring concrete into this bond beam course I'm also going to pump it down into those vert sections and and I want to make sure that it doesn't get wasted into all of those other voids. And that's what the mortar mesh does. And so now you can see that I've got the full height verts installed. And then as I pour this concrete and fill it across and it's going to get dumped in there, I'm using a vibratory machine and that is vibrating it down into those vert sections. And those two rebars are essentially going to bond together and it's going to become like a big web of metal and concrete, which makes this extremely strong. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is not a how to build a concrete block wall video. This is more just showcasing what I did. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that'll teach you basically the fundamentals of how to build a wall. I'm just showing you the entire process of how I did it. One of the most important things that you can do before you start this project is make sure that it is a properly engineered structure. I did all of the engineering on this. I made it so that it would withstand a 120 mile per hour wind load. That was really important to me. Even though it's in the back of the yard, this is a hurricane zone. The footer design and construction is even way more important than the actual wall itself because the wall is only as strong as the footer that's holding it up. If the thing falls over, it's not very useful, is it? 
I made a previous video of us pouring that footer, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. There will be a link in the video description. You can see now that the wall has reached a height that it requires scaffolding, and rather than rent or buy expensive scaffolding, I got a free local resource called pallets, and they are everywhere and they're free. So at the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that I had made a lot of mistakes from this construction, and a lot of those were related to the string line itself. Now I've run plenty of string lines in my day, but this was my first time ever using a product called a masonry line block. It's an absolute must if you're going to do any block wall construction, and I am ashamed to admit that I just simply didn't figure out how to pull the string tight enough while using that product for the first few courses. This wall is just over 38 feet long, and since I had not pulled the string tight enough, there were some courses where the center actually sagged down about half an inch. Once I had recognized that mistake, it was an easy fix, and the subsequent courses just eliminated that problem altogether. There was also a time when a caterpillar was crawling on the string line, and that resulted in four blocks being set about an eighth inch too low. Again, no big deal, but I was pretty angry at that caterpillar. You may have just noticed that there were also many blocks that I had set and then ended up removing and then resetting, and that is because I am not a consistent professional bricklayer, so my gaps are sometimes cumulatively a little bit too much or a little bit too little. In my situation, I was always going to texture the final product, so I wasn't really too worried about it. You may also notice that I'm not doing the grout lines. There's a tool that actually makes them pretty. I'm not wasting my time with that because I'm just going to cover everything up. On the flip side of that coin, because I'm such a great neighbor, I am dressing up the back side of the wall a little bit as far as the grout lines are concerned. And I'm not doing that in a professional proper way. Basically, all I'm doing is I wear a rubber glove and I scoop on and I apply mortar by hand and I just smooth it out. And and it's on the back of the wall, so you're never going to see it, but it does make it look a little bit nice and more presentable. Now, the main reason I'm building such a heavy-duty structure at the back of our yard is because that fence, which is the neighbor's, is already starting to fail. It's really, really close to just collapsing. And that's partially due to the fact that it was just never installed correctly. It was a cheap fence, but also because of the fact that the neighbors have that back area of their yard as their chicken coop, so they throw a lot of food scraps back there and yard waste, and that's great for the chickens, but not so great for us as neighbors as far as smells and bugs are concerned. So I just wanted to preemptively build this wall now before that fence failed and then before we were basically introduced to their chickens on a first-hand experience, which for the record they are adorable and lovely and I enjoyed talking to them throughout the entire construction of this wall, but I don't want to know them any better than that. So back to mistakes that I made. As you can see, I'm now doing the final course, the top course, which is also a bond bean course, and I completely forgot to put the mortar mesh in place for this course. So pretty soon you're going to start seeing me shove a bunch of cardboard and concrete bags and other random trash into the void cells that don't need to be filled with concrete. And that was my ghetto solution so that I could pour concrete and the rebar right across that top course and not waste it, basically. And here's a great time for me to give a loving shout out to the beautiful Danielle, as you can see that she came out on both of the concrete pour days. And on these fill days, which was, there's two bond beam courses, so there was concrete mixing and filling on both of those days. That was about 3,000 pounds of material each day that we mixed and set. I bought this little cobalt concrete mixer off of Craigslist for this job, and it was a lifesaver. It would do about three bags at a time, and then we'd have to pour all of that product into five gallon buckets. I would hand them up to Danielle up on the pallet scaffolding and she would pour it into the cells and then I would go up there with the vibrator and make sure that it settled down properly. We got a good little system and rhythm going there and honestly I'm not sure if you could even do this step completely alone. It was just really super labor intensive but either way I absolutely totally appreciate her support for this whole project. If you're into fun data trivia I can tell you that this entire project cost us right around 3,000 in materials and start to finish on it was about four months. Now granted, two of those months were downtime, waiting for the footer to dry and waiting for the finish to dry prior to paint, but I did almost the entire project one course at a time, after work, every other night, that sort of thing, just real casual and enjoyable. The two bond beam course days had to be done on a weekend so that I would have Danielle to assist me, and the one day where I did all that dirt transportation in the wheelbarrow, that was a cranky day, but everything else was really fun and relaxing and very therapeutic to build this wall. Certainly wouldn't want to do it as a professional 
profession, but as a hobby, it was totally fun. If you were wondering what I just did really slowly across the top of the wall was a nice smooth rounded finish. It's just kind of like a cap, but it makes it look very presentable and it's going to make sure that the water runs off of it. Then we sprayed the whole wall down with an adhesion promoter and now we're applying our stucco finish. And stucco is just mortar. When it's applied over like a wood frame structure, there's this whole process. But when you're applying it over block wall, you really just mix up the mortar and slap it on there in whatever design you want. And to be clear, neither of us had ever done this before. So that's why our first little section took a long time. And then once we got the hang of it, it flew by and we got it done so quickly. And then voila, the wall was done. After a month of dry time, we primed it and then painted it. And you can see the result here and we couldn't be happier. It is just so lovely and a perfect backdrop for the back of our yard. Thank you so much for watching. This is 13 with Spear Mobile by 13. I'll talk to you later. Bye.